Hello and welcome to the channel. Right now I'm in the process of creating a small project, an LED night light for my daughter's bedroom. And while I was working on it, I thought to myself, why not just create a video about showing how I made those fancy LED diffusers or enclosures? Because, yeah, there are people out there who are interested in 3D printing or creating their own lights like like the one I'm doing, but uh, not particularly interested in the electronics or the Arduino code or stuff like that. So let's just do another 3D printing video and let me show you how I made those uh, diffusers. Before we start for a second, let me talk about um, the picture I've shown before. So. I tried to select some complicated shapes and uh, because I'm making this light for my daughter's bedroom the shapes were given. These are just her favorite heroes from her favorite cartoon franchise. And um, as you can see the light is uh, not evenly distributed but it is not the problem with the diffusers. It is the problem with um, distributing the LED lights under the diffusers. But anyway, let's get to start working on um, our own custom shape diffusers. So first of all, you will need a couple of free software that you will need to download and install. So the tools you will need in order Inkscape, Ultimaker, Cura and Fusion 360. So Inkscape is a vector graphics program and you will use it to turn your shape into something that can be loaded into Fusion. Now Fusion is um, in the easiest way to say it's a 3D modeling program. It's actually way more than that, but if you're new to Fusion, you will be amazed by its capabilities. But anyway, those are really out of scope for this video. And lastly, Ultimaker Cura is uh, the 3D, pr 3D printing program and it's called the Slicer. And uh, if you're doing 3D printing, you're pretty much probably familiar with it. So you won't waste uh, too much uh, on Cura we will need just um, a few settings and that's it. Anyway, uh, let's start by finding a shape we want to turn into diffuser, assuming that you have uh, installed all this uh, software, of course. Okay, so let's just Google for some image. Uh, adding silhouette to the search helps a lot. Once you have selected the image, try to open it in a browser in the highest resolution it is possible. So like I do, then uh, just copy and paste it into Inkscape and we are ready to process it. To 3D print something like this, we will need to turn it into something called a vector-based image. Now I don't go into details right now about vector-based images versus bitmaps and so on because that would just take too long, but instead let's just do the following steps. First of all, right after pasting the image, it will be probably a bit small. So feel free to resize it within Inkscape, just by dragging and dropping one of its corners. Then next, we will have to select the image and then go to the menu, pass and then select trace bitmap. This will basically help us convert the bitmap or the image into a vector based image. Normally you can just go with the default settings with this dialog, so just press OK. Interestingly enough, the dialog won't close, so even if you press OK again, instead you will have to close it manually. Anyways, now we have a bitmap and a vector-based copy of the same image. We have to get rid of the bitmap and keep the vector, so let's try to differentiate them. The easiest way to do it is by checking the status bar on the bottom of the screen. So select one of the objects and then just see what's there. For the image, for the bitmap, it says image. On the other hand, for the vector-based graphics, it says pass. So let's get rid of the one which says image. So just press delete here. So at this point, all we have is our vector-based image. So let's save it into a file, one with an SVG extension, which stands for scalable vector graphics, by the way. Now with Infusion we need to search for an option where we can import an SVG file. 
Remember, this is not a fusion tutorial, so we don't care about much of the options and possibilities here. Once we have imported the file, its uh, contents will appear as a series of uh, vector-based paths. So we can drop what we don't want and uh, just keep the parts we want to 3D print actually. So that's what I'm doing now. You can select stuff with the left mouse button and uh, by dragging and you can delete stuff by pressing the delete button. Take care about that though, that you will need to have a convex shape to make it a 3D printable object. Once you're done with cleaning the necessary parts, click into the middle of your object and it should turn blue. Now either right click and select extrude or just press the E button on your keyboard. This will turn your two-dimensional shape into a three-dimensional object by adding height to it. So in this dialog you have to enter how high do you want your diffuser to be. In my case it's 10 millimeters. At this point you can try the orbit tool of Fusion, which is responsible for being able to rotate the object. So as you can see it's already three-dimensional, but uh, it's like a solid object. Don't worry too much though. Cura will solve this for us, so let's load this object into Cura. For this you have to select Make from the toolbar and then 3D Print. In the dialog that appears you make sure you select Cura as your 3D printing utility and then click OK. Cura should start up here. Now within Cura, your first thing to do is to make sure that the object lays on its side nice and flat. If it doesn't, you have to simply turn it. At this point you are safe to scale the object if you are for some reason not satisfied with its current dimensions. Now let's see some print settings which will help us turn this solid object into a diffuser we want. Since we want our object to be hollow, the first and most important thing is to get rid of the top layer. So set both the thickness and the layer count to zero. The next thing to make the object empty on the inside is to set the infill percentage to zero as well. Finally, something you might want to adjust is the wall thickness because our object at this point will contain only a bottom and its side walls. Now let's slice it and let's see the preview. As you can see, it's exactly what we wanted, a hollow object in which you can place an LED light. Now it's time to print the actual object. As you can see, I decided to print the object with a slightly thicker wall. And that's because I want, to, want the light to radiate mostly at the front of the object, I mean the diffuser, and not really on the sides. But then again, this is pretty much up to your personal preference. In my case, the ticker walls also provide a slightly cartoonish look to the whole thing, which is a good thing, I guess, because these are, well, cartoon heroes. And yeah, this is the outcome. So I printed all six figures, and uh, they are all nice, flat, and shiny. And uh, I printed them with some cheap matte white PLA, which is, I guess, the best for printing diffusers because the color must come from the LED and not from the filament. And this PLA I'm using is really, really pure white. Now that the diffusers are ready, I've got a wall light to assemble. So I say goodbye and thank you for watching this video. See you next time. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.